Okay, so uh, write a rule for a sub n. I'm not telling you that it's geometric or arithmetic. It's just a sequence. And I'm asking you to find a rule. And what's another word for rule? Yeah, formula. Find the formula for you uh, that gives us a sub n. So what we mean is, well, it might be more helpful to see it that a sub 1 needs to be 2. So I need to be able to take 1, put it into an equation of some kind, and it gives me 2. And a sub 2 needs to give me 5, so I need to put 2 into that same equation, gives me 2, or 5. a sub 3 needs to give me 10, put 3 in that equation, gives me 10. Put 4 in that equation, it gives me 17. Put 5 in that equation, it gives me 26. Sometimes just writing it like that is a helpful way to see what that rule is, see what that formula is. Um, anybody come up with it? Or see it now? Yeah, and so how did you come up with that? Try something until you found it, okay? So knowing that this number needs to be able to plug into the equation is uh, a real key, important thing. Um, and so once you know that you're supposed to try and take this number, mess around with it, and get this number, um, you have a, like a clear understanding of that, a fluid understanding of that. It makes finding this a whole lot easier. Um, sometimes starting with the higher numbers is a little, helps a little bit. Okay, working your way down here, seeing, well, this it looks like it's, it's one off of a factor of five. This is one off of a factor of four, this is one off of a factor of three, factor of two. Okay, so um, that seems like maybe something. Okay, um, but then we know it's not just like two times five plus one. It's uh, not three times five times five plus one, or this is four times four, three times three, and uh, get n squared plus one. Like, there, there's no way for me to, to prescribe to you some method for finding these rules that just works every time. You have to understand that what you're doing is taking this number, the index, putting it into an equation, and that equation gives you out the number. Right? So that comes only with practice. If you feel like you need some practice, section one of chapter 12 is a good place to find a bunch of practice, so I can give you some practice problems. Using summation notation, this is one that, that we've been having trouble, I think, just understanding the directions. I'm not asking you to add it, I'm not asking you to use a formula to find the sum. I'm asking for summation notation, which means what? It's the biggest thing that you see that you know you're in summation notation. The sigma. So something goes here. I. If it's up to you and you're just giving some numbers and you're adding them together and you're going to write it in sigma notation, probably start at one, right? It's, it's your choice. One makes the most sense. What that means is we're going to start with a sub one. We're going to move to a sub two and we're going to add that and add a sub three and add a sub four. Just the most natural thing. We could start a sub seven, add up a sub eight, a sub nine, a sub ten. We're just going to make a rule that when you put in seven, it gives you seven. When you put in eight, it gives you thirteen. And so on and so on. Um, but it makes more sense to start at one. Start at one and go to four. So what goes here then? Four. Four. Start at one, go to four. A sub one to a sub four. And add them all up. That's what the sigma means. So add up all the terms from the first term to the fourth term. And what goes here? Put the rule. You need to put the rule there. So what is the rule for this series? Ten plus one. Sounds good. Let's see if it works. Six times one plus one is seven. Six times two is twelve. Plus one is thirteen. Six times three is eighteen. Plus one is nineteen. Six times four is twenty-four. Plus one is twenty-five. Right? <laughs> I got it. Right. The funny thing is, I'm not.
also, this is what kind of a series? Uh, arithmetic. arithmetic or arithmetic. You can call it arithmetic if you want. It's your prerogative. Uh, the rule for an arithmetic series is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So all you need to know is a sub 1 and d, which is the difference. a sub 1 is 7.
that one. And on to the next one. Arithmetic sequence, which is pretty important to know. If you didn't know it was arithmetic, then uh, there really wouldn't be a way to proceed in a way that you know it would be correct. Uh, the arithmetic sequence tells us what about the sequence? Oh, that you add a number. You add a number. When you go from one number to the next, you add a number. So, for instance, if I were to go from a sub 1 to a sub 2, I would add some number, some number that we call b. To write the rule for an arithmetic sequence, remember that this is the rule for writing rules. Right, so we need to know a sub 1, and we need to know d. Which of those can we find with this information? So the 25th term is 219. We can find d. How do we find d? Of 25, you would add something, pretend you don't know it's 9, add something, add something, something, uh, you'd add it a bunch of times, all the way up to a sub 37. Okay, so here from the 25th term to the 37th term, you would take 12 steps. You would add the, add the, add the 12 times. So if we take the difference between 327 and 219, and we'll have 108, and then we divide it into those 12 pieces, and we find what 1D is worth, D is 9. Okay? Now we want to find A sub 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what equation did you create? 219. Okay, so you're just filling in the uh, blank spots that you have here, filling in the things that you know, okay? 219, that's the 25th term. So that's a sub n is 219. a sub n represents the actual number. Okay, equals what? x? Or a sub 1. a sub 1, the thing that we want to know. Plus what? Twenty-five, right? N is twenty-five for two nineteen minus one times d, which we know is nine. So two nineteen equals a sub one plus twenty-four times nine. Two nineteen minus was twenty-four times nine. Just solve for a sub one here. Subtract twenty-four times nine equals two hundred and sixteen. Two hundred and sixteen. That leaves us with three. a sub n equals a sub 1, which you just found to be 3, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 9. Any questions? The same thing here for two different problems. Uh, we just start with different pieces of information. So we're going to write a rule for the geometric sequence. Geometric means that we multiply to get from one number to the next instead of add like we do in an arithmetic sequence. For a geometric sequence, we have a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So just a 
becomes a matter of knowing those pieces of information. A sub one and R. So it's two. What's A sub one? The first number. The first number, three. And R, what are we multiplying by? Seven. Multiplying by seven. Piece of cake, right? You have to just figure out what A sub one is and what R is. Here, we know what A sub six is and what A sub nine is. And we're supposed to find the same thing, find the, the rule, the equation. Let's find out for sure by applying what we know about geometric sequences. What do we know about geometric sequences? It's like you're multiplying, right? So from a sub 6 to get to a sub 7, I would multiply. By what? I don't know. Right? So we'll call it r. I don't know what it is. I'll create an equation we're going to solve for r. Then we'll get to a sub 8 by multiplying by r again. We'll take uh, a sub 6, which is 39, we'll multiply by r, then we'll multiply by r again, and then we'll get to a sub 9 by multiplying by r another time, and that'll get us to 1050. So what equation can we write with 39, 3 r's, and 1050? 39. Uh, plus. Plus, we're adding. What are we doing? We're multiplying. Oh, multiplying. R to the third, we're multiplying by R, by R, by another R. When you multiply by three R's, it's R to the third. And 50. And 50. Alright, now we see what we need to do to solve for R. Divide by 39. Q equals 27. How do we find third root? Take the third root. R equals three. How do, now what, we need a sub one? Can we find a sub one now that we know that R is mm -hmm. three? How can we do that? Divide by three times. How many times? Six. Well, six times. Five times. Five times thirty-nine. Let's just count out. We go a sub three, a sub, or sorry, a sub five, a sub four, a sub three, a sub two, a sub one. We're gonna go back one, two, three, four, five. So we'll take 39 and divide it by 3 five times. Just like when we multiply by 3 five times, we multiply by 3 to the fifth. We divide by 3 five times, we'll divide by 3 to the fifth. So that's uh, 39 over 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth. 39 over 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth. So that's a sub 1. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. similar to the way we found the rule for the arithmetic sequence, okay. but instead of uh, adding something a bunch of times, we multiplied a bunch of times. So instead of subtracting and dividing by 12, we divided, we divided by 39, 1050 divided by 39, figure out how much you'd have to multiply 39 by to get to 1053, and figure out the number we can multiply by itself three times to get 27, which is what you multiply to 1053.
by the sum of the geometric sequence. I really write series. Very proper. Series means we're adding. So it's a geometric series. The formula for a geometric series is a sub one times one minus r to the n over one minus r. All we need to know is a sub one and r. Do we know a sub one? R is what? A sub 1, I said. Right? A sub 1 is 3. If you plug 1 in for i, 4 minus 1 is 0, 4 minus 0 is 1, 3 times 1. What's r? 4. So that's the thing we're multiplying by 4. Okay, 4 to the what? Which one? To the fifth. It's to the n power. It's the number of terms that you're adding to. Or, sorry, yeah, adding together. 1 minus r, which is 4. This is negative 3. Negative 3 cancels the 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 minus 4 to the fifth. That's 4 to the fifth. Helping as we go over this more and more. Good. That's my dream. Dream is coming true. You're learning more each time we do these. Okay. So we are probably just going to get through 12.4 here. And here's the question. Take out your notes and such. Should I do this out of red? Anytime we add up a finite number of terms, called a partial sum. Okay. Right. S sub 5 or S sub 12 or S sub whatever, we use those formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences. Uh, they're called partial sums. This guy here is called the fifth partial sum, called the twelfth. Any sum we've taken so far has been a partial sum. It's a part. It's a part of the whole thing. What would the whole thing be then? What's that? Infinite. Infinite. You take all of the terms and add them all up forever. Let's see what would happen if we added up all these terms forever. Okay? So no longer. Let's just look at what kinds of numbers we get. Right? Okay, the first one, I ask the second one, the third one, the fourth one. What's the first number in this sequence series? Three. Three. And the next one? Twelve. And the next one? Twenty-eight. Eight. And the next one? Six. And the next one?
gonna never get gonna, never gonna end, never gonna stop. Never going to, like, we're not gonna get eight billion, and then there it is, that's it, that's the sub, right? Why is that? Why is it just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Just because infinity? Multiplying by positive number. It's bigger than one. Making sure that every time we multiply this, this term, because the next term we'll get what kind of a number? Bigger. Bigger number, bigger number, bigger number. If we just keep adding on bigger numbers and bigger numbers and bigger numbers and bigger numbers, we're gonna get a bigger number. Big surprise? Not a big surprise. What if we added smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller numbers? You think is it just gonna go on forever and just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Smaller. So let's look at uh, an example. Like one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus. Okay, so at least the numbers are getting smaller as we go, and so we're. It's not that it's obvious that we would just go off to infinity, and the number would just be, you know, out, just out of this world, never approaching any single value, just getting bigger and just getting bigger and just getting bigger. Right? Since these numbers are smaller, maybe something different happens. just to show you a visual of it. Let's start with that square represents one. Okay, so that's the first term. Right. So we gotta add a half. So I will just cut this in half, and so we have this plus that. So we have this much plus a half. How do I add a fourth to this? Cut the rest of this in half. So add another fourth. Okay, so so far we have one plus a half plus a fourth. One half a fourth. How would we add an eighth? Cut that other piece in half, the remaining piece in half. One eighth. Cut this in half, one sixteenth. Cut this in half, one thirty second. Cut this in half, one four sixty four. Cut this in half and this in half. This in half. Forever and ever and ever. And what do you think we get? Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. One plus a half plus this fourth plus this eighth plus this sixteenth is thirty second, this sixty fourth, this one hundred twenty eighth, this five hundred twelfth, one thousand twenty fourth, right? You just keep adding a half and a half, like half of the previous. Do you think this, that the total of this is just going to get bigger out to infinity? No. Do you think you'll ever get to like a billion adding these up? No. no. So we're not going off to infinity. The number of terms goes on to infinity, but the number itself that you're getting when you add these together, well, it's, uh, it's limited. It's never going to get past what? Do you think? Two. Two. And actually, if we add these up forever, we will get two. Prove it to you. We just don't have enough time right now. I'll prove it to you next class. What? You need to do it now. <laughs> I can prove it later. You can do it the proof of it is not necessary for your use of it. Well, I'll go crazy if I don't know. <coughs> <laughs> then I'll show you later. We got uh, just a few minutes. Here. Yeah, fifteen minutes. Ten minutes. Right. We need to, well, we need to apply. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, now this happens because, at least one simplistic reason is because our numbers aren't getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We're talking about geometric sequences, right? So we, we strictly are multiplying the previous term to get the next term. All right. So what is it about this geometric sequence that causes us to not get bigger and bigger and bigger numbers, but smaller and smaller and smaller numbers? about negative? Seeming negative numbers. Number less than one. What number is less than one? Any one. Like anything after a
we start with 3. What causes the next number 12 to be bigger than 3? It's a geometric series. Multiply. Multiply by what? 4. By 4. Multiply by 2. What about this series? What causes this number to be smaller than that number? Multiply by a half. 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 That's what causes it to get smaller and smaller and smaller. What kind of numbers, like that, we're saying r is equal to a half, right? Right. So what kind of r's, what kind of values of r are going to cause you to get smaller and smaller and smaller numbers as you continue through the series? Fractions, I'm going to argue with that a little bit because like three halves yeah. is a fraction. Proper fractions. Proper fractions. So a proper fraction. So a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, meaning that that number is less than one. Not one, not, e not equal to one, but less than one, strictly less than one. Okay? So for a geometric series, If R, okay, R is less than one, what these symbols mean? Oh, absolute value. Absolute value of R. So that must imply that R can also be negative. But as long as the absolute value of R, which means you just take whatever this number is to be positive, as long as that's not less than one. So what are some R values that would meet this condition right here? Two over three. Uh, a negative number. A negative number would meet this condition. Negative three. Negative three. Negative two thirds. Negative, negative one half. Negative five eleven. Five eleven. Okay. Any number that is a proper fraction that is less than one, or whose absolute value is less than one. Uh, the sum, the infinite, so when we write the infinite sum, we just don't write a, a, a number down here. Just writing this kind of means like the sum of an infinite number of terms. This is given by a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Okay. Next class, I want to, uh, I want to prove this to you. I also want to explain this formula to you. But we can use the formula, and next time we'll talk about like how we come about this formula. And it comes from the formula we already know, a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. But then we go to infinity, and something dependent happens. But if we use this formula, we can find the sum of an infinite geometric series as long as the absolute value of r is less than 1. The proper fraction could be positive, could be negative. Smaller than I want you to use the formula. Did you write it down? If you did, great. If you didn't, I can write it down. How about uh, five? Then three. Then nine. Six. Then twenty. Seven.
far so good? Make sense? Any questions so far? Plug in an A sub 1, plug in an R. Do 1 minus R, we got to get a common denominator, so we get 2 fifths. How am I going to do 5 divided by 2 fifths? Say again? Multiply by the reciprocal of the thing you're dividing by. 5 over 1 times 5 over 2. 25 over We add this up forever, which we can't physically do. That's the thing that's difficult. You might say in this previous one, well, you can't, it won't ever be equal to 2 when you add all of these up, because you can never do it. And you're right, you can't ever physically actually do that. But theoretically, if we did add them up forever, which we can prove like using algebra, using equations, if we were to do it forever, we would get 2. It's just that you can't actually. Is 25 over 2. Well, all of this added up forever. Forever. Which is only something that can be done in the mind, right, in theory. If you were to add them up forever, you would get 25 over 2. 12 and a half. Kind of hard to accept, but I'll prove it to you. So anytime you're given a geometric series and you want to add them up forever, first make sure that r is what? Less than 1. And if it's negative, then it needs to be like bigger than negative. Right? Okay, so that still works. And then you just use your formula, you said 1 over 1 minus r. That's great. All right. Um, one last thing with infinite geometric series, here's a cool thing we can do. Any decimal that at some point starts to repeat, and so to follow this repeating pattern, we can write as a fraction. Because we can write it as the sum, an infinite geometric sum, and uh, find its decimal's uh, fraction representation. It's rational number representation. Let's start with one that we already know what the fraction is supposed to be. What fraction is that supposed to be? One third. One third. Divide one by three, put it in your calculator, it will give you threes up until the edge of the screen, and you use this distinctly. First, we have to write it as a geometric series, which means one term plus another term plus another term plus another term. We have to make this infinite uh, string of threes. So here's how we do it. A sub 1 is 0.3. So we just take that first 3 out of the middle. So then A sub 2, I want to add something to get the next 3, so I'll add 0.03. Right? 0.3 plus 0.03. No carrying or anything, we just get 0.33. 3.003, the third 3, and we continue this on forever. Okay, again. So now we've written 0.333 as an infinite sum. Now to write it as a geometric series. See how one, one term gets to the next term by multiplying. I think that's the easiest if we say, well, 0.3 is 3 tenths, right? 3 tenths. We know our decimal places. That's in the tenth place. There's 3 tenths. How about this, three hundredths, and this, three thousandths. So if we add all of these up, they're fractions, right? We're trying to find the fraction representation of this decimal. And if we add them all up and like find a common denominator and all that for this infinite number of things, then we'll supposedly come up with one third. Okay. Um, is this a geometric series? Like, can I multiply 3 tenths by something to get 3 over 100 and multiply by that again to get 3 over 1,000? Yeah. Multiply by what? 1. 1 tenth. If I multiply this by 1 tenth, I multiply 3 times 1. 10 times 10 is 100. Multiply this by a 10. 3 times 1 is 3. And 100 times 10 is 1,000. And if we keep multiplying by 1 tenth, we'll keep getting 1 more zero. Okay. So r equals 1 over 10. So we've got it. We've got everything we need. We've got a sub 1, and we got r. A sub 1, and we got R. So S equals 3 tenths over 1 minus 1 tenth. 3 tenths over 9 tenths. Multiply by the reciprocal. 3 tenths times 10 ninths. 1 over 3. In 
homework in the homework video, you will see we do it for for other kinds of repeating decimals. Even decimals like point four seven four seven four seven four seven will just be incorporated in the same way. It's just that uh, like R will be a little bit different. So I'm gonna do um, last like thirty seconds.